Life in the northwestern states has been shaped by geography, the prairies, plateaus, and mountains. In the region's eastern half, the rich prairies of Kansas and Nebraska, and the high plains of the Dakotas. Further west and higher, the wide open spaces of Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado. And through Idaho and Utah in the region's western half, the great Rocky Mountain Range. Of the six regions into which we may divide the United States, the Northwest is largest. It covers one third of the nation's total area. The Missouri River is the largest of the seven drainage areas in this region. Rainfall has always been a major concern. Half the Northwest receives less than 16 inches of rain annually. The plant and animal life is just as varied as the geography. On the plains, grama and buffalo grass, cottonwood trees and prairie dogs. Then on the higher plateaus, sagebrush. And in the mountains, black bears, other large game animals, and a seemingly endless expanse of pine forests. Most settlers came to the Northwest after 1850. They were homesteaders from the middle states, some from the other regions and Canada. And then came the greatest numbers, immigrants from Germany, Russia, Norway, and Sweden. Settlers hungry for free land, willing to work hard to keep it. Today, less than half the population lives by farming. Five cities, Wichita, Kansas City, Omaha, Denver, Salt Lake City, have populations over 100,000. Each of these cities is an important jobbing and wholesale center. The people themselves take pride in their colorful past. The Northwest gave America the frontiersman with his sod home. The last frontier and the home of the Indian. The American cowboy, the sheep herders and cattlemen, and the distinctive Mormon culture. Early prospectors found gold, which is still mined in South Dakota, Colorado, and Utah. Silver, three-fourths of the nation's supply, is mined in Idaho, Utah, Colorado, and Montana. Lead, one half of the nation's supply, is mined in the Northwest. And Utah and Montana produce about a half of the nation's copper. And there are uranium deposits in Colorado. Butte, Montana is built directly over one of the world's richest mineral deposits. Butte's mines yield copper ore, which is shipped to the smelter. The refined copper is cast into ingots for shipment to manufacturing centers the world over. Oil production, on the other hand, is only a fraction of the nation's output. Yet its money return to these states is important. Bituminous coal and lignite belts underlie much of the region, adding to its reputation for rich mineral resources. Virgin forests, another regional resource, cover large tracts of the mountain areas. Much of it is now conserved in national forests and lumbered under strict regulations. The white pine forest in Idaho is the largest in the world. Here, the lumbering industry provides work for many men. But the soil is the Northwest's most valuable resource. The soil was first exploited by the range cattle industry. Even today, the farms and ranches of this region supply nearly a third of our beef cattle. Some of the cattle are shipped to packing centers within the region, but a great number go to cities of the middle states, particularly Chicago, St. Paul, and St. Louis. The dressed beef is distributed throughout the United States and Europe. The Northwest raises a third of the nation's sheep and lambs. High on the plateaus between mountain ranges, sheep herders and their dogs stand guard over the flocks. 
In the spring, the heavy wool is sheared. The region produces more than a third of the nation's wool. And lambs by the thousands are shipped from here to packing centers. Wheat is the most important cash crop. A third of the nation's winter wheat is grown in the area around Kansas. More than three-fourths of the spring wheat is supplied by the area centered in North Dakota. Today, much of our wheat is raised on large farms. Almost every stage of its production is done by power machines, plowing, seeding, and harvesting. The wheat is hauled by truck to grain elevators for storage. From here, much is shipped by rail to the flour mills, sometimes within the region. But the bulk goes by rail to Minneapolis or by boat to Buffalo to be processed and made into flour. Flour that will be distributed to all regions of the United States and Europe. Part of the nation's great corn belt extends over into the northwestern states of Nebraska, South Dakota, and Kansas. Much of this corn is harvested green for cattle fodder. Some is cut and blown into silos as winter feed for cattle. Indeed, the silos dotting the open landscapes are among the most distinctive features of the northwestern region. The northwest is also the source of other important grain crops. Rye, used for bread and animal fodder. Flax, cultivated for the seeds that yield linseed oil. Alfalfa, part of the large hay harvest that is baled and shipped to other regions. In the Northwest, large areas of the cultivated land receive less than 16 inches of annual rainfall. This means that much of the agriculture has to be done by dry farming, which permits the soil to lie fallow at intervals. At such times, the soil is frequently cultivated to conserve moisture for the next crop. In certain plateau areas, the federal government has developed a great many irrigation projects. This irrigated land is used for orchards, although most of it helps support the extensive alfalfa crops and sugar beet farms. Probably the best solution to the region's lack of enough rain is further development of similar irrigation projects. Here on the Northwest Great Plains is America's legendary Main Street. Numberless small towns and villages, each a trading center for the rural area around it. Most of the towns have the same features, the grain elevators, livestock shipping pens, the busy streets when farmers and their families crowd into town to do their shopping, and the public school an important institution in any Plains town, which leads the way for many to the state university and the state agricultural colleges. The Northwest must import all kinds of manufactured goods from other regions, farm machinery, tools, ready-made clothing, together with nearly all fruits and vegetables. The Northwest gives to the nation and the world a vast surplus of food products, beef cattle, sheep, grains such as wheat, rye, and barley. And to millions of tourists each year, the Northwest is the land of fabulous attractions. Glacier Park, Yellowstone Park, the Grand Teton Mountains, snow-fed mountain streams, and the dude ranches, where people can escape from their cramped city life and relive the romance of the Old West. The Northwestern states, the land of our last frontier, and the breadbasket of the nation.